Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk and today I uh, thought we would have a, uh, another look at this. Now this is the motherboard out of that Amiga 500 Plus that I um, started stripping down and doing a general um, overhaul, well just a general look at um, on my last uh, Amiga video uh, last year now. It's been quite a while since I um, really touched uh, the Amigas and um, yeah I thought um, I would just show you what I've done so far on it. Now if you remember from that video where it had quite bad corrosion um, around the battery area here. Let's just see if we can get a bit closer into shot. Um, if you remember last time we didn't do any work on it at all but we um, twisted the battery. We give it a little bit of a shake like that and um, broke the battery free and got that off the board. And since then, um, I've, like I said, I've not really done a huge amount to it um, until uh, a couple of weeks ago when I had a little bit of uh, free time and I took the board out of the case. Now, I did record all this and um, unfortunately I managed to lose all the footage so um, you can't see the uh, fun that I had um, with Gary there. Um, basically, what happened was um, after I got this out of the computer, I decided that I would, um, before I did anything else, I'd just pop all the um, chips out, all the ICs that are in sockets out, one at a time, and just check all the pins on them, uh, make sure they were clean, make sure they're bright, because I have seen in these computers in the past where corrosion's actually got a far, as far up as the CIA here. It's even affected uh, Paula over there. It's usually um, Gary that um, buys it, and uh, in this instance, um, that was the case, um, the CIA is up here, and nice and clean, these sockets are absolutely fine. Parlor again, uh, there was no corrosion on any of um, Paul's pins, and um, the socket's absolutely fine. Gary, however, when I um, attempted to lift Gary out of his socket, um, Gary actually came out okay. Um, the pins, every pin on it was thick with green um, corrosion, but he come out okay. The socket, however, um, half the pins actually came out stuck to uh, the legs of the Gary chip. Um, they were that corroded, they just broke apart. So what I had to do was um, replace that socket there and obviously see what corrosion was going on underneath. Really, even if um, the socket hadn't been quite as bad, I'd have probably still thought about taking it off the board just to assess round there and find out exactly how bad um, the corrosion was. Um, so what I ended up doing was actually breaking up the old, um, I think I've thrown it all away now, but uh, I actually ended up breaking up the old socket and then sliding, the p heating the pins up from the top and then getting hold of them with a pair of tweezers and actually pulling each pin out one at a time because the solder was in such a horrible condition no matter what I tried from underneath I just couldn't get the solder to suck out that was with uh, a manual desoldering pump that was with desoldering braid which to be honest probably worked better than anything else and that was even with my um, <coughs> sorry my proper um, solder my um, proper solder um, sucker um, even that didn't work to get the, get them out. My uh, proper desoldering station, but heating each pin up individually and pulling them out from the top got all but six of the um, original uh, pins out. Six of them had actually corroded off at the board. That's how bad the corrosion was on them. And no matter what I did, no matter what I tried on them six, I could not get. The, what was left of the leg stuck in the hole to come out. The solder had like, just turned to like a crystalline substance. It just wasn't solder anymore. No matter how much solder I added to it, it just wasn't for um, desoldering. So what I did, and this is a bit of a risky move, but um, you need a very steady hand. I took my absolute finest PCB drill bit, which is a micro micro fine drill bit, and I drilled through the centre of each of the uh, pins that were stuck in the holes. I then took a very, very slightly larger drill bit and I drilled again and just slightly enlarged that hole. Then when I um, flew, I then got some, some solder and I flowed solder into them holes and sucked it out with um, the solder sucker and then I put some more solder in there. 
I uh, mopped that up with a solder braid and then with a, uh, a tool bit like this I whittled what was left of the legs and they finally um, broke free and I was able to clear the holes so I could fit a new um, IC socket. Now while the socket was out I checked continuity between all the tracers that come off that socket and to all the wires are up to where they go up to another socket and I found one broken um, trace and it was, I think it was yeah it's between that uh, resistor pack there and um, Gary I think it's about there there was one trace which was broken so what I did I um, replaced the socket and I put a little bridge wire in just to replace that um, broken trace over there and I uh, cleaned all the pins of Gary up I um, cleaned a few of the little bits up on the board, I cleaned the, um, the power connector up there and I plugged it into a power supply and connected a composite video monitor and all I'm getting from it is a black screen yep basically just getting a black screen off it so next I went down to this IC here because the corrosion around here was really quite severe so again I had a hell of a job to get that IC off and I don't know whether I'm going to order a new it's a um, 74 LS um, 244 I believe um, I got it rather hot trying to actually get it off the board um, again the solder just was not for um, releasing on um, this in hindsight I should have really just cut the um, pins on it and uh, taking each pin out individually like I uh, did with that and um, just gone off and ordered a new one because like I said I don't know whether that's working or not uh, still we're just still getting a black screen but what it did allow me to do was clean up some of the corrosion around that with the IC sock with the IC out before I put that socket in and uh, I can't find any broken traces in this area here so um, that's pretty much where we're up to now um, I have tried firing it up with the ROM removed because um, I'd expect if we remove the ROM it would probably just show a red screen or something like that I think I remember on my um, Amiga 500 um, if I powered that up without the ROM in it just shows the red screen um, it's a while since I've um, got that computer out so I could be wrong there but I think that's what happens um, again this with the ROM removed you just get a uh, black screen I have checked and I am getting 5 volts um, at the RAM I'm getting 5 volts at the ROM there um, so I'm expecting I'm getting power through to the board but at the moment like I say all I'm getting is a uh, is a black screen I will wait till I've got a replacement um, for that um, 74LS 244 before I go um, any further Excuse me, a little bit of a frog in my throat tonight. Anyway, um, what I was going to say is that what I found very, very useful while I was um, working on this was um, this here. Now, this is as cheap as you can get um, USB microscope. I think it cost me about 10 quid from China. And what this allows you to do is inspect the board in um, quite minute detail and what I've got, I've got this set up to a, a piece of software on a um, computer I'll just pan you up so you can um, see what um, I can see now this is it, this is a really crap um, USB uh, microscope uh, the revel resolution on it is pretty appalling but it does the job for uh, what we're doing here which is inspecting the uh, motherboard as you can see using this I can really can zoom in and have a really close look this is around that um, 74 series um, IC that I uh, replaced that's the um, socket there that I put it's a nice turn pin um, socket that I uh, replaced the chip in but it allows you to really inspect all the uh, traces on the board you see you can see them in really good detail you can see the um, vias you can see the corrosion on the board as you can see here you can see all um, that's nice 
uncorroded there and then as you um, come down here you can see where the corrosion the corrosion has uh, got to the tracers but I have tried tested these tracers for continuity and they have all got continuity around this IC again um, this is this you can see here is just residue this here um, let me see if I can get my point, pointer in there that there you can see is just residue flux residue uh, I need to clean the board a bit better from uh, soldering that socket in um, but really you can just see we come to these resistors you can see like the crystalline um, deposits um, here on the uh, legs of the resistors and it actually like that kind of scrapes away you have to kind of like scrape at it can you see how the solder is just not like solder anymore it's kind of like powder you just scrape at it and it just scrapes away so really all these need um, going over and at least reflowing with some fresh solder and um, again same up oops let's see if we can get this I'm having to hold the um, camera at this I really need a better stand that will go right over a um, right over a motherboard rather than uh, what I'm having to do here I'm holding it freehand like but you can see like see you can see the corrosion you can see the corrosion down here um, where are we or is it up here yeah you can see the corrosion around here anyway can't you there you see the uh, green and you can see it on these uh, these uh, lines here these uh, tracers so yeah um, I've still got quite a few tracers out so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to end up um, going through once I've changed that and just made sure it isn't um, that that's causing the problem um, I'm going to have to go through all the tracers in this area and make sure that we haven't got another failed trace somewhere which I've um, not found already there's even corrosion down right down here which I've just noticed so that may have to come out and um, we'll check around there make sure we've got um, continuity around there what I have thought if uh, this doesn't work and I can't get this board up and running this is a um, Amiga 500 plus obviously motherboard hence why we have that problem what I've spotted on eBay is there's um, quite often you can buy Amiga 500 bare motherboards this is where um, the chip traders have got hold of them and stripped them down because to them they're worth more in their um, constituent parts really than um, they are as the whole computers um, and what they end up doing is they'll um, strip all the um, custom ICs off and sell all these ICs separately and sadly what some do then is they hack they actually chop up the um, board and sell the board for the sockets for you to desolder which is absolute lunacy because you can buy these sockets um, brand new online for literally pence you know like 50p or something like that why chop up I mean they do it for the RAM as well which I, can, I kind of understand more you know because you could buy that chunk of the board there with the RAM on and desolder it and um, possibly be able to use it um, I mean, possibly slightly more so for slightly odder to get sockets like for the um, Motorola CPU there but even them are still available uh, these sockets are actually quite hard to um, get now um, I've got a few spares but they are getting quite um, difficult to find now um, which are through hole but so possibly yeah they don't do it for that but um, thankfully what I have spotted is someone that's just selling every now and again they have the Amiga 500 boards just with no ICs on them all the socketed ICs are missing but it's apart from that um, generally speaking it is a working board so what I could do is buy one of them and transplant all the major ICs the processor the um, kickstart Fat Agnes, Parla, Deni um, Denise um, and the, C the odd and even CIAs, the um, keyboard controller, Gary, off this board um, onto one of them 500 boards and um, I could even possibly um, pinch some of this RAM and populate the 500 board with one meg of RAM as well so it would be essentially the same as a 500 plus just running on a um, 500 board so that is a possibility if I um, can indeed uh, get this up and running
Anyway, um, like I said, it's just a little quick update, this. Um, I thought I'd uh, let you know how I've been uh, getting on with the 500, and I haven't completely forgotten about it. Uh, there's still lots to work to do on it. There's, still, there's a hell of a lot of corrosion on this um, board. Uh, but that's what you get with Amiga 500 Pluses. So I'm uh, going to leave it at that for now. Um, I hope you like that. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.